The making of customary IHL raises specific problems. One of the major debates has focused on whose practice is relevant for the determination of customary IHL. As mentioned above, state practice is one of the two constitutive elements of IHL. What about non-state actors? It is a crucial issue, since some non-state actors play a significant role in armed conflicts. Those include armed groups and the International Committee of the Red Cross. No one argues that the practice of armed groups can contribute to the emergence of rules that would bind states. But could the practice of armed groups be relevant for the formation of customary rules that bind themselves and other armed groups? Some authors and international criminal tribunals, including the ICTY, have already relied on the practice of armed groups as evidence of the formation of a customary rule applicable to them. However, if we examine the logical foundations of this claim, we can see that it implies that armed groups have an international legal personality and a state-like capacity to create international law. These are very controversial claims. States are strongly opposed to the recognition of such a personality and capacity, while legal scholarship is divided on these questions. The majority of scholars are reluctant to give those groups any capacity to make international law, even if they admit that the groups have a form of international legal personality. In addition, it has been argued that if armed groups can create customary IHL, then this may lead to a regression of the current applicable IHL, given the, the inhuman practices of some of those groups. There are therefore several obstacles against including the practice of armed groups in the types of evidence that are considered relevant for the formation of customary IHL rules even if those rules are only applicable to armed groups. Contrary to armed groups, it is generally admitted that the International Committee of the Red Cross has an international legal personality. The RCRC has a number of specific tasks assigned to it under IHL conventions. Its practice is clearly relevant in shaping the customary rules that affect the performance of its task. May that practice also count as relevant practice for the formation of customary norms applicable to the states? An affirm answer uh, has been given by the RCRC itself, which has considered, and I quote, official RCRC statements, in particular appeals and memoranda, on respect for international humanitarian law as relevant practice because the RCRC is international legal personality and because it has received an official mandate from states to work for the faithful application of international humanitarian law applicable in armed conflicts and to prepare any development thereof. Yet, this remains highly controversial. It is generally admitted that the RCRC practice may contribute to the formation of customary IHL, but in an indirect way by influencing state practice. The RCRC can influence state practice, thus contributing to the development of customary IHL, mainly by triggering state reactions with regard to its actions. It may also secure more particular concessions by pressing for the incorporation of its studies on IHL in national instruments, such as military manuals or national legislation. I now invite you to read an excerpt of the ICTY decision in the Tadic case, which goes in that sense. <laughs> 